What's up guys, it's Dragon. We're taking a break from the Toy Fair Madness, hitting you with a little bit of community goodness. Quick question, what do both of the things on the preview table have in common right now? If you guess that they're both German, you're correct. So Jinx is und proper German Fraulein and uh, terrible accent aside, this is from my friend, my 3D base and is a very cool uh, German sort of rival pistol design. So uh, taking a lot of notes uh, as he's evolved from the NG1, which was full length darts to the NG2, which was Talon Mag exclusive, and is honestly, I think going to remain my favorite one of his designs. This is the NG3. Now we've got some, uh, some pretty cool German uh, newspaper in here protecting our uh, blaster, but inside uh, we should have a preview of said NG3. Now the NG3 comes in at 130 euros, which means that it's a little less expensive than what I think is the closest direct comparison out of darts Jupiter. Now, uh, they're both 3D printed rival blasters and they have a lot of similarities, but some differences. The biggest one that I can tell is that you can buy the Jupiter as a kit uh, for a little less money and fully assembled the Jupiter costs a little bit more uh, than this guy. So at 130 uh, euros, you, ooh, this one's slick. So uh, black, gray, and orange, complete with a little stand here. This is a good looking blaster. Now let's talk about some notable features. It's a 2S blaster. It in theory hits around 100 FPS and some market improvements. So the original NG1 and 2 had kind of like a button-esque rev trigger with a screw that went down the center. Now the screw still goes down the center, but this still has a very nice kind of feathery trigger here, uh, but is, is more ergonomic than the main trigger pull. The main trigger pull actually feels very good. One of my issues with the Goblin is that it's a little flippy, uh, but this, in terms of the control circuit here, actually feels very, very nice. Now, the rest of the blaster is uh, pretty simple in its design. It's a back-fed sort of rival magazine uh, semi-auto blaster, and that is where the biggest difference comes into play. Uh, DOS Jupiter is full auto, and you have to stagger your shots while using it. Uh, the NG3 is semi-auto intrinsically. As far as like their overall profiles go, very, very similar. The NG3 is a little bit longer. If you're a big fan of the Jupiter being a, a vertical magwell, this is a horizontal magwell. This uses uh, proprietary wheels, whereas the Jupiter I think uses uh, worker full-size flywheels. But that's enough talking about a competing product. As much as I love Luke and his platform, and I'm really looking forward to some upcoming things with the Jupiter, uh, we're here to focus on the NG3. Now back here, uh, we've got a toolless uh, battery tray, which is quite, quite nice. We're going to go ahead and plug in a Graphene 2S, as this is a 2S blaster. Uh, fold that into the tray and see... And that's quite nice, it just clicks into place. Now, we conveniently have a rival magazine here ripped and ready to go. I'm pretty sure that this is just a friction fit. You've got detents on either side here, which look good. And then the, uh, the magazine for semi-auto just appears to rock around in. It lets one in and through, but then it pops back up in the back to prevent it from going too far forward. Uh, that's a clean and easy fit. It feels good. Uh, sticks out a good ways from the back, but that's kind of how all of these pistols work. Uh, so not really a shoulderable blaster. You don't want to be shouldering your magazine into the blaster, but let's uh, see. With theoretical 100 FPS shots... So it does leave one inside, which is interesting if you kind of balance it in there. You could pop it out like so. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's pretty loud. It's, uh, it's pretty loud uh, because there's a huge hollow space inside the almost kind of Cobra Hood-esque design up here, uh, but that's not the end of the world. If you're running around outside and you're playing with this, I think that it would also be really good in CQB. Uh, should not be a big deal. Now you've got some interesting sort of ribbing on the flywheels, which of course is really good, uh, for blasters that shoot rival rounds because it lets them get a better grip on the balls. Let's let that one go. I think we gotta take it outside and put it over the magical number machine. Let's go. All right guys, let's put a couple over the chronograph, then we'll put a couple down range, see how the hop up on this works. It does have a very, very small hop up ramp built in to the muzzle device, and the muzzle device looks like the kind of thing that you could change up uh, on the fly if you wanted to. Actually, I think it's all one piece. It looks like it's screwed on, but I think it's all one piece. Uh, so you get a tactical rail up top, you get the battery compartment down here, you get the most comfortable grip that uh, 
my 3D base has put out so far, and you get one loud boy throwing balls down range. Let's see. All right, so that was everywhere from mid 80s up to 109 and then back down to 100. So the consistency seems a little bit dicey. And realistically, what you're getting is a roughly regular rival performances, which in the EU, I know is actually very impressive. In America, it's closer to baseline. That said, um, a lot of rival blasters cost this amount of money now. And this is a bespoke blaster that comes in any color and supports a small maker. I think that it's really cool. I think that it's really good iterative work from him. And I'm actually pretty excited to see how it performs uh, shooting down into this dreary uh, Georgia weather. So. Uh, pretty good hop up, uh, definitely getting ranges of about 70 feet. Of course, being rival ammo, it's floating. The last 20, the initial velocity being low, means that it's pretty consistent in that trajectory. One tipped down, which might just be a, an error in dimpling on that particular round, but most of them tend to curve up and out of there. The overall magazine release and then reinsertion is actually uh, very, very nice. It's smooth. It's not quite as beveled in the back here, but that's sort of by design to get these multicolored pieces on here. Overall, I think that this is a, a fantastic blaster from a guy who's been doing it right for multiple years now. I'm really excited to meet uh, my 3D base at Foam Fest, which is the UK's primary uh, nerfing event, uh, or their flagship nerfing event, uh, which is kind of pulling people from the EU into it, uh, which is uh, ironic these days, but uh, the, the nerf community Community remains as united as ever. I'm really excited to see everyone. I'll put links to Foam Fest down below. If you happen to be in the EU or the UK and you'd like to meet me, I'm a proud, proud sponsor of the event and can't wait to meet you all there. So that's Foam Fest. Uh, right now, as of the publishing of this video, I'm making it the day before I fly up to New York for Toy Fair, but as of the publishing of this video, I'm wandering around somewhere in the Javits Center right, right now. So if you're seeing this video fresh and live and you're excited about this, but you're also excited about a lot of other new releases coming from major toy manufacturers, not small bespoke creators like this, uh, throw me a comment down below. Let me know what you're most excited in seeing at New York Toy Fair. And I will be giving you guys tons and tons of coverage that'll be spackled around this video from that event. It is my biggest industry show of the year. And I'm so humbled and privileged to get to cover it for you. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, as always, much love, nerf on, drag out.